Welcome back to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner Classics Classics Noon Classics. This is episode number 1565 and double shot number 1400 and I believe it's 69. Yeah, 69. Now I have one Marvel trade and one DC trade. Yep. Now, this first one is like a big collection. And this is the only trading review for this because, well, he hasn't had much for trades. At all. This is this is actually one of three he's actually had. The other two just are two volumes that this volume just combined the one. That's the simple gist of it. Who are we talking about? The Vision. This is the complete collection of The Vision. Yes, all 12 issues of Tom King's critical acclaim run that he had on The Vision. Released in, I think it was like, 2015 and then 2016. Unknown why it ended after one year. Uh, I've never heard of explanation for this. It could be due to the fact he had his contract with DC, so... Excuse me, this is just some by weird coincidence, where I think it was just a couple years prior to this, where Gary Duggan did something over at DC. It's something that Gary Duggan is nowhere to do with his he's When people think of Gary Duggan, people think of his work for Marvel. He did do one DC work, Arkham Manor, and that was it. The only reason why he didn't do it anymore, because he has exclusive contact with Marvel. Tom King is probably the same thing too, even though he does do some independent stuff. Now, the first issue is the debut of Virginia Vision, Viv Vision, and Vin Vision. Vin Vision is Vision's son. Viv Vision is a character who is still around this very day. Pop up in the recently as Book of Champions. In the case of Virginia Vision, she's only this book, and there's a reason why I'll get to that. And there's a death in the first issue. The first issue feels kind of like something out of a 50s sitcom set in modern day. We have Cookie, you have Cookies, you have Vision and his wife sleeping in separate beds in the same room. It's like, man, that is pulled directly from the 50s. The later on, they do move the nightstand in the middle. And they, do share, and they do, in fact, kind of in a way, share the same bed. Kind of, in a way. They do that a little later on. When, get this. Vision has sex with his own wife. Which I'm like, damn, man. Like, the thing is, Virginia Vision is a beautiful woman. Despite being an android, she's, she's hot. Like, damn. And basically, the way she does in a romantic way, she was wearing, like, this very revealing underwear. And she just used her phasing stuff that she does and just made the, their clothes just automatically just fall off and Vision's like damn he's probably thinking though in his head damn I am the luckiest man in the world to have this wife as my as woman as my wife and then she takes off his pants his uh looks like his sweatpants and apparently they did it off panel it goes a little later on and a few issues later they're actually in bed together completely naked this also is in the same issue where previously Vision was sharing a bed with the Scarlet Witch when they were when they were a couple, and, and, and Scarlet Witch is completely naked. No, they did not show her topless in this scene, despite the fact you would think they would. Nope, they didn't. At least that the artist of this book, which by the way, same artist, all twelve issues, which you don't see that very often. Actually, a couple different artists because one art, one issue that this artist did skip. You have Gabriel Hart, um, Gabriel Hernandez Walta. Who does the interior artwork for most of this run, except for issue seven? Issue seven is done by um, Michael Walsh. Now, this cover here, which you see on a lot of the covers for Division, this actually is done by Mike Del Mundo, who does the first four issues in seven through twelve. Five through six are done by Marco De De Facito. Now, now the reason why you don't see Virginia Vision and Vin Vision is because. They're both dead. I'll get to the reason why they're dead. So, in the first issue, we show off the family for the first time, and look like they're about to go to school, and it comes to come home from school, and then Virginia is, and then we have Viv Vision just leaning against the door, and then she gets stabbed in the freaking heart by the Grim Reaper. And you're thinking, what the heck is Eric Williams, the Grim Reaper, doing in the vision? And she's just like, imposters! And then he gets killed while being whacked to death with a freaking cookie pan. Now, as she pointed out, though, a human cannot normally be killed while being whacked to death multiple times with a freaking cookie pan. 
the way it was done here. Normally, like, sometimes it can work, sometimes it can't work, but the other reason why with Virginia Vision, because she mentioned her, many times in the book her first name was Virginia, that, because she is not referred to as Mrs. Vision, she is not like referred to as all. So, and she kills him. And then buries him in, in the backyard. Now, I should point out, though, about this. Now, you are thinking, wait, then what about the girl who showed up in, in Valkyrie, uh, in, Jane Foster, in the Jane Foster Valkyrie series? Well, he's still dead. He has been dead now for seven years. There have been, like, brief attempts to see him, like, kind of alive. This might be still stated as deceased. But, yeah, he's never fully revived. Nope. This book officially killed the character off. And... I should point out, though, this is, a, this is actually the fifth time he's died. And you're probably asking, Nick, how the heck did he die five times? You might ask. Well, there is a reason for that. Let's see if we can find him here. Now, the Grim here first timed, he first died in... Web of Spider-Man 46, and then it was Dark Rain, Lady Leaves, number 2, Chaos War, Avengers, number 3, Uncanny Avengers 5 and 21, and this issue here. So, he officially died. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the sixth time he's died. Yes, it has been a recurring joke at Marvel, where whenever they kill this character off, and then he just comes back without an explanation. But yes, he is still officially dead. Marvel has never fully revived him. I don't think there's... I think the reason why that, well, he was able to come back in the pages of Jane Foster Valkyrie was because he came back while being escaped from, from the actual afterlife, but not fully resurrected. That was only for a few issues, and that was it for him. And, yeah, Grimper's still been dead. So, throughout the first half, a lot of this book basically... Like, somebody later found out about her burying the Green, Green Reaper in our backyard. So, she was blackmailed for it. Though she did, it was able to go to basically get out of the blackmail by basically beat the crap out of people and then never be bothered again. And, also, we have a tour of Vin Vision, where he got into a fight with a teenager at school who was insulting his sister. He, of course, picked him up by the throat, nearly killed him, and just sent him down. Look how the kid didn't die at that point. He did later did die. Both him and his father both killed by Virginia Vision. Yeah, she killed him. In self-defense. Yes, seriously. She killed him in self-defense. And Vision is the one who's questioned about this. Not Virginia Vision. Oh no, Virginia is never questioned about this at all. It's the Vision because he's well known. And apparently, he does keep good records of his whole family. Now, Virginia Vision does kind of say, kind of basically, for the first half of this book, does stay in sort of a comatose state until she's fully revived, thanks to using power from her own father, and she's fully revived. And she stays normal for all the rest of the series. Then, of course, like, aside from apparently killing up a father and his son... Pretty normal, per se, aside from the romantic scene. Now, I think in the case of the romantic scene, I think it took place before the two murders. And, of course, they have a little flashback. Now, they do explain where the family comes from. Yes, this is all an idea came to him by the Scarlet Witch. Now, according to Scarlet Witch, and this is indeed true, where the vision is based upon the brain patterns of Simon Williams, a.k.a. Wonder Man. So, she created this little chip, well, thanks, of course, also to help uh, from Simon. And I think that the Beast made this, too. Where, basically... Now, here's the thing about the Genia Vision. She's based upon the brain patterns of the Scarlet Witch. Now, the thing is, where... The, the, when she gave this, this is just after she, had, she was in the middle of making out with Wonder Man. Now, here's the thing. Vision had no problem with her hooking up with Wonder Man. With, with Wonder Man. It had no problem at all. It's like, okay, uh, we're, even though longer it's got, I'm not going to enter your relationship. He was very respectful for that. He's like, hold on, here, have this. So, he created his wife, 
and then he created his kids. Now, I think that vid vision is based upon, like, uh, basically both these kids are based upon their brain patterns are based on how many both of them. Like, like, both kids are, well, you know, Virginia Vision is based upon the Scar of the Witch. The kids are a combination of both the Scar of the Witch and the Vision themselves for these two kids. And then toward the end of the book, Victor Machina shows up. And you're probably thinking, Nick, who is Victor Machina? Victor Machina is the Vision's brother. He first showed up in the second volume for Runaways. When the Runaways fought freaking Ultron. Yep, and after he turned on his own father, he joined the Runaways. And he was part of the group up until the last issue of was released. I think it was like in 2014, I think it was. And then he popped up in Avengers AI, which that's where he made his brother for the first time, the Vision. And he pops up here. And then after I have a... Now, apparently, get this. The way that's written here is that the event... Now, now the son of Tony Stark did help the Vision restore his daughter. Apparently, the Avengers don't fully trust the Vision's family. They had no problem with the vision. He said they don't trust his family because he officially created them. Now, how long these these this family has been around for, unknown. Yeah, it's implied around for a while, but it's not like he some of this in just a day or two. It's probably now a lot of the time this stuff is happening like on his days off when he's not active with the Avengers. Though I should point out though, the alpha he wears in here is not the original outfit that. Well, when he first showed up in the comic books back in the 60s. Oh, no. Now, a lot of the time when he shows up in here, he does show up wearing the current attire that he's he's wearing. Yes, I believe he started wearing this just after Secret Wars. I'm not really sure what was the purpose of switching up his attire. But, yeah, that was his attire. It's been his attire for a long time. And then... And, of course, we have where Victor Machine has had a conversation with the Avengers. And I just point out that at the time this book came out, that Sam Wilson was, 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 was Captain America at this point. So, and this is kind of during the era of all new, all different Avengers. This is when this book was coming out. So, apparently the Avengers were sent Victor Machine to keep an eye on them. And, apparently, Vin Vision found out about it. And Victor Machine had killed his own nephew. And hold off the jail. And in the vision it was like. I'm going to kill my brother. For killing my son. So he goes off. He. Like just easily gets to the Avengers. As for Wanda. All he does is put his hand through his chest. Her chest. And just knocks her out. He doesn't kill her. Because I think he still has some feelings for her. But he does not want to seriously harm. The woman who was the use as the base for his wife so he gets Victor Machina's cell and he's about to kill him and then his wife comes right behind Victor Machina and, and just puts her hand through his, uh, his his back and rip his heart out Mortal Kombat style and kills him on the spot and then she later dies in Vision's arms in the final issue and of course the Vision is off to be a normal high school teenager by the end of the series and, of course, Vision still pops up in Avenger books. Still occasionally nowadays. Like, he still popped up in all known different Avengers. He popped up in the following Vaughn Avengers. Now, did he pop up in the Jason Aaron run? As far as I know, no. I think they kind of basically put him to a side for some reason. Well, he did pop up in... I think it was in, like, Avengers... Uh, no Road Home. Yeah, he popped up there. But I think that's been it for him. I think he might be dead. Well, his last known appearance was Avengers No Road Home. In the final issue of that series. Which I should point out though, is really good. Yes, it is an excellent series. I do recommend checking it out. It is an excellent book. And I should point out, though, the people who wrote the issue are clear fans. A clear longtime Marvel fans. Mm hmm. Yeah, just the same people who wrote No Surrender, which was an also an excellent miniseries. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, this particular book, uh, No Road Home, I believe this was his division's most recent appearance. Uh, let me look it up on here. I think that was his most recent appearance. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, this is like as of recently. Well, let's see. He appeared in the second. He appeared in like one issue of. He basically like of appearance were like one offs. He did appear in twenty so like Iron Man for a few issues, but like the last issues that run. He appeared in Empire. He appeared in Fantastic Four. Well, one issue of the current volume for the series. His most recent thing he's appearing in is X Men Trial of Magneto. Yeah, that's his most recent thing he did appear in. And the thing is, after this book was over with, now, Dead Vision later joined the Champions right after this. And she, she's been a long time part of the Champions group, which is a fantastic series. Uh, the original volume that was originally done by Mark Wade and Harold Turan was really good. I think Jim Zeb, the one who replaced him, did a really good job with the book. And then they had that stupid relaunch, which I still feel as though was completely unnecessary. It's because they thought the book, oh, book is not doing to us, so I fix it by hitting that restart button. This book, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10 because it's just a really good book. I do recommend checking it out. Now, here's something really strange, though. Uh, last year, there was going to be a revival of the Vision book. Yes, they were going to continue this book as a 6 issue miniseries. Yes, there was later a director's cut that was a 6 issue miniseries that was simply like a... I haven't read it yet, but the director's cut of this book, from what I heard, was really good. It's basically Tom King giving notes on every single little bit he did about this entire book. I haven't read that yet. Uh, I'll probably read it in the future, but in the case of the revived miniseries, this was come out last year. This was six, six, six issues. Excuse me. Uh, you're probably thinking, who was going to write this book? And you're thinking, hmm. That's a good question. Who was going to write it? Well, the writer people were going to write it were, even the book has been canceled because of the stupid pandemic. It was written by Calissa Kane and Mark Mann. Calissa Kane was the writer of the Mockingbird series. Yep. She wrote the entire 80 issue series of Mockingbird. Wrote an issue of of choose of Civil War two choosing sides, and she wrote the fifth anniversary one shot. But I was one of the writers. Um, Mark Mahoon, um, let's see, he was. Let's see. Well, from what I heard, he, he's supposed to be like, um, Calissa Kane's, like, real-life husband. They were going to write this book. And the book got canceled. It was basically, like, supposed to be the next step of, of what happened in this book. But the pandemic canceled the book. It was supposed to actually come out... Actually, no, it was not canceled because of the pandemic. Uh, it was canceled prior to the pandemic. Yeah, I'm not really sure why. It's it's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know what the reason is. Like, this book was supposed to come out originally three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. I uh, don't know why. It's just kind of weird. Like, this would have been excellent. I mean, basically exploring the next chapter what happened in this book. It'd be good. Too bad the book got canceled before it got came out. Yep. Now Vid Vision not not Vid. Vid Vision is a very popular character. Still around. Uh get this. At one point she made out with Armadeus Cho, and it was kind of implied that before that that kiss that she was, that um, Nova wanted to be the first one to kiss her, but nope, it was Amadeus Cho. And then for some strange reason, I'm not really sure why, 
She wanted to start a relationship. She wanted to have a kiss with Riri Williams. I am not kidding about that. It was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Like, apparently she wanted to do it for some reason. And then I think they stopped it for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Now, now the thing with my my pin of the champions before I, before I move on to my next book, uh, the 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 concept of show up in twenty sixteen. I love this group. It's a shame Mara keeps trying to drop the ball on this group, despite the fact that this group is so good. I mean, the first volume was fantastic, loved it. The first one they had with them, second volume was still pretty good. Nothing wrong with it. I thought it was kind of stupid to cancel book of ten issues, and then they brought the group back. As part of the student outlawed event. Yep. They brought the group back as part of outlawed. Initially, it was supposed to be a limited series. That was the plan. And then they decided to simply like, oh, let's let's give it five more issues in order to expand the story of this story that nobody wanted at all. And now the book is going to end again. At 10 issues. I'm looking forward to reviewing this whenever I get a chance to get the trade for it. Alright. Moving on to a different book that's not Marvel. We have... Wonder Woman! Agent of Peace! Volume 1. The Global Galardian. Now, this book was actually started last year. Uh, this is in response to the pandemic. They wanted... DC wanted to keep some stuff going with DC. It's like a lot of books being on hold for like a couple months. So, they decided to do this. this. This is one of several of these books. They did for Wonder Woman. They did for Flash, Batman, Superman. They did for Teen Titans. Like, a lot of their characters, they gave these, like, digital first books for them. Now, this only collects the first 11 out of 23 chapters for this book. Now, a majority of the stories in here are done by Jimmy Palmiani and Amanda Connor. When I saw it, and of course, I like... I, I mainly bought this... Mainly because I'm a fan of this creative team. Uh, I'm, Wonder Woman's not my personal favorite character, but I do enjoy reading her books. Yes, now, Harley Quinn only shows up for the first couple stories, and that's it. Now, I should point out, though, Jim Harley and Amanda are not the only writers. They do write majority of this, but we also have Andreas Sheen, Louise Simonson, the wife of Walt Simonson, Marv Wolfman, Van Jensen, Scott Nullins, Jeff Parker and Steve Steve Plog. Uh, Scott Nolan also does some artwork in here. The art the artwork is well not only that with Scott Nolan, but also Mark Reed Savage, Daniel Semper, Megan Hedrick, Ikem Madrina, Hen Hendry Pastria, Paul Peliter, Jose Luis, Jerry Reptic, Akik, and that's it. The cover art here is done by Amanda Connor and Alex St. Clair. Now, the first story involves basically her team up with Harley Quinn for a story. And it almost feels like, though, with this story here, despite that her dealing with whatever person that's, well, in the book. This is another book, basically, I kind of felt as though it was set during the universe that Jim and Tommy Amanda Connor set up for Harley Quinn. Because, well, we have Sai saw up here. Yes. And that's what it feels like. It feels like basically Wonder Woman pop up in a in a in a, in a Harley Quinn story. And this last is a good great team up story. And you can kind of think of it as a mild follow up to the time of team up in Harley Quinn's little black book. <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. Yep. That was just the first story in here. We also have the Curse of uh, K2, where she, well, just basically like like a fun story. She teams up with Lois Lane. Yeah, she teams up with Lois Lane for a story, which, not a bad idea. The thing with Lois Lane of Wonder Woman, 
Lo Lo Lois Lane, uh, when it comes to people with superheroes in DC Comics, Wonder Woman is probably by far the only one she kind of considered one, one of her closest friends. The only female superhero she's actually close with. I mean, can you think of any other female superhero in DC Universe who's actually close with Lois Lane? You could say Renee Montoya when she was the question, but aside from that, nobody. Uh, mostly pushes close friends, people in, in the in the Superman books, but outside of it, just Wonder Woman. Because of the close friends they had over the years. Probably because also the fact that in pre-Flashpoint, Wonder Woman kissed Bat, uh, Superman in the Action Comics 600. This is, of course, after Crisis of the Earths. Yep. It's a big supernatural story, and it's just a really good team of story. Next was her take on Gorilla Grodd. Yes, that's one of taking on Gorilla and Grodd. And that's another story done by Amanda Connor and Jeb Helmiani. And of course, she has a guest appearance by her, her boyfriend, Steve Trevor. Yep, you have to see him here, just now the fact he's even freaking here. And just a great story. And then you have, get this, you have next story, which is done by, say, people. We have the Penguin working with Killer Croc, the Cheetah, Captain Cold, Scarecrow... Lion Mane, I, not the big familiar with this villain, and Black Manta, along with, I know who this redhead is supposed to be because I know that, on this page, like that's the Penguin head of the table, uh, you see the Cheetah on the left side, you see Cheetah, Captain Cold, Scarecrow, and Lion Mane. That's probably who that guy is. On his right, you have Killer Croc, Black Manta, and. Oh, that's supposed to be Two Face. Yep. So you kind of say it's an alliance between uh, some Batman villains, a Wonder Woman villain, a Aquaman villain, and I'm not sure about Lion Mane. No, I'm not really sure about that one. Let's see if I can find information about him because. Because I don't remember if he's a Wonder Woman villain or is he like an enemy of like somebody else. Oh, he's an enemy of uh, Batwing. Mm hmm. Yes, Batwing. That's what he was post Flash. Apparently, he was originally an enemy of Hawkman. Are you thinking, why the heck would, would an enemy of Hawkman show up here? Well, technically, that's not the first time he showed up. He actually first showed up as an enemy for, get this, the Earth 2 Huntress. Yep. And Lion Man himself, he only made just, let's see. Aside appearing in this one issue, which, uh... He still occasionally appeared afterwards. Now, did he fight? Uh, did he pop up in the current volume of Hawkman? I don't think he ever did. Let's see. He popped up mostly, he mostly for Hawkman, and he popped up also in Superman, Batman, Teen Titans, and he popped up for Crap for Justice. Now, in the case of this Hawkman, not, not Hawkman, Lyle Main, I saw him pop up in Batwing, which Jimmy Hawkman did create this version of the character. Like, he popped up here for a couple issues. He popped up in probably Argus. And then he popped up in this story here. And that's it for him. Mm hmm Yes. Of course, Hot Spring Eternal is actually from Wonder Woman Giant. It's a story of Wonder Woman Giant number four. That's where these giant... That's where these stories come from. Yep. And it, this story, just her working with uh, a friend of hers... By the way, they actually draw her in not the the current attire. Yeah, occasionally if it's not uh, like the present day stuff. I mean, this this costume here looks like the the costume she wore. Appearance wise, it kind of looks like the the golden age attire with the with the eagle. Yeah, she wears this a couple times. You could say they borrow this artist, and then of course, then she switches up with the present day attire. You could say that's probably a past tire for her before she went to the present day tire. And basically you have her taking a lot of villains. And then her switching back to the current attire. 
where in the next story, which is a story, Dolph, this one was up by Van Jensen, where she takes on freaking Deadshot. Yes, Deadshot. Because why not? Then you have the Scott Nolan story. <clears throat> Her taking on some weird guy. I don't know who he is. He's got good artwork, though. I love the artwork for Scott Nolan. He's a really good artist. I, th I, I Yeah, I, I met him once. Uh, he worked Keith Giffen on the Blue Beetle book. Yeah, he he told me this, that when he when he worked on Blue Beetle, that um, did, of course, well, because a lot of time editorial mandates basically, like, wins for books. Like, Blue Beetle only had one editorial mandate. Show and take core in the bug. And that was from Jeff Johns himself. But this, I didn't talk about this. Because I this was after I met him. You have the Guardian of the Great, which is a Jeff Parker story. Yep. Or it's most like her working with people from North Mythology, like taking out a Valkyrie. Yeah, this is how a Valkyrie is drawn by DC Comics. Because normally Valkyrie is associated with, with Marvel. Mm hmm And we switch up with different artists here, which then we have this artist. Looks like she's drawing Wonder Woman from I'd say more Golden Age stuff. Based upon the attire, based on what her outfit, I, I would say probably Earth One. Yeah, the way her outfit looked in Earth One would look like a swimsuit. Yeah, and this artwork is done by Margaret Savage. I believe this is the artist for the not the Legend of Wonder Woman series. I believe this is one. one I think it's one of her past artists. Yep. Oh yeah, and she has a story takes on KG Beast because of course she has a story takes on KG Beast. This was done by Mary Shearer and Megan uh, Hedrick. We have a guest star appearance in here by Eda Candy. Yes, Eda Candy. One woman was best friends. And it's a great story for her. Mm -hmm. Eda Candy. I'm glad the fact they restored her to her chubby appearance because here's the thing. Post Flashpoint, they made her black for they made her skinny. And you were like, really? Eda Candy is skinny in DC Comics? Yes, seriously. Like, they apparently also changed her skin color to freaking black. Yeah, they changed her black for, like, no reason. Yeah, made her black and made her a bit thinner. Now, you might be asking, is somehow, some way, is she, like, have a thing for Steve Trevor like she did pre-Flashpoint? No. She never did at all and that's one of the most baffling things when it comes to eat a candy is that post flashpoint they made her black for like no reason here she's back to her pre flash appearance where she's white chunky and this is simply put basically like her acting like the traditional eat a candy. Now, does she eat candy in here like she in the Golden Age? No, she doesn't. Then we have Lou Samus' story, which which is Awakening. It's mostly her looking to some... We also show off her awesome super strength she's got. And she basically does some archaeology stuff. This is one thing she does on the side. And she's here and she interacts with the cheetah. Now... I should point out, though, post-Flashpoint, Cheetah's naked. Yeah, she's not wearing anything. Here, this looks like pre-Flashpoint. I would say this looks like post-Crisis Wonder Woman. Based upon uh, the way her outfit looks. Yeah, this looks like post-Crisis Wonder Woman. B b based on the look itself. Her taking the Cheetah for, it, for this issue here. The whole wearing clothing has been unused because a lot of the time, Barbara Nova didn't wear clothing half the time. Mm-hmm. It is blowing. I think this is supposed to be flying a Kiel. I'm not really sure. So, it's a lot of Wonder Woman just going around the world with these stories in here. Mm -hmm. Her battling various crimes and various different tires. But this is just all just really good stuff here. She does interact with Wonder Woman, one woman here called, uh, who's a, supposed to be a friend of hers. Where in one story, one, one panel on here, it looks like, though, that when she has this jewel, 
that the way it looks, the way this panel is drawn here, it's like, oh, she puts her hand on Wonder Woman. And, like, in this moment, it almost feels as though, like, anybody can tell, like, oh, maybe maybe she's going to try to get away by using this jewel to hypnotize her just so she can make out with her. Nope. Not really. I mean, that's what it looks like, though, by the panel. That she was going to use a jewel to hypnotize one to make out with her. But nope, she doesn't do that. Hand off the police and, well, that's it. Well, you think that's it, but nope. Bows her one more time. And this jewel that she has here, this this ruby, kind of reminds me of the Power Stone from, from, from Marvel Comics. That's what it reminds me of. But this, this is really good. I give this a 9.5 9 out of 10. Just damn good. Love it. Okay, so... That's it, Sick Love You. I have two more comic corners. I'm also going to do some Super Sentai today. And I'm also going to do my three anime I wasn't able to do till last night because I wasn't feeling well. I'm feeling fine now. So let's do it. Okay? See you next video. Bye.